So you've been playing Hades 2 Early Access for a while now. You've gotten through the first win against Kronos, the Fear 8 win, and the Fear 16 wins on both Kronos and Eris. And now you're coming up to a pretty daunting hill. Fear 32 and Hades 2 Early Access is a completely different animal. You're dying constantly against some of the biggest hits that you've ever seen, or a timer that's making it a little bit more difficult to get through the game, or tons and tons of monsters with tons and tons of HP. Of course, there is a reward for getting your Fear 32 win, and that's the coveted Knight's Champion statue given at the end by Skelly. But of course, there's more that you can do. You can keep playing the game on 32 and win on every aspect that's available. So if you really want to get into it, let's actually give that a try. Today, we're going to start off with the axe. If you've been struggling with the axe or if you're a big fan of it, this video might be for you. And if people like it, then I'll probably try to do it for the other weapons too. Let me start off by saying there's no objectively right way to go about Fear 32. Everything you're going to see from me is just what helped me out and is my personal preference for getting through different kinds of fights with different kinds of aspects. In this case, we're going to be starting off with Melinoe's Aspect. Melinoe's Aspect is pretty generic. It gives you an attack power bonus and some max life. I of course have this maxed out because the resources aren't too terrible to get. With a sort of generic item like this, I kept my cards relatively generic too. Most of what's in here is all down to personal taste, which is just your basic slowdown for channeling, healing, damage for spending mana, omega moves can crit, we activate the messenger by having three cards of the same amount, bonus damage to enemies in my cast, extra starting life and starting mana, we're restoring mana every second, against bosses we absorb three hits before we start taking damage, we have our three death defiances, centaur is enabled by having active cards from one to five, we have omega cast damage, this one is very easy to swap in and out of, I have my four cost down here, we can re-roll a boon's choices and then finally because we have that full top row we have 20 percent increased chance of finding an epic boon but as i said because this is a very generic weapon i don't have a specific god that i want to access not yet anyway so when i start this off i'm actually using a keepsake called crystalline figure crystalline figure activates a random arcana card that is currently not active after killing the first boss. This is RNG, however I would say that in this arcana board setup, there's literally one card that is like a bad roll on RNG and that's strength. Looking at our fear board, of course we're playing on 32 fear, but 32 fear can be a lot of things to different people. In this case I happen to have a bit of the run stacked against me. What I mean by that is monsters are relatively harder and I'm on a timer and some of my resources are a bit reduced. Currently monsters are dealing their maximum damage. With Vow of Dominance, monsters have 20% more HP, which could be seen as very bad, but my thought process is that my axe can do enough damage to basic monsters that 20% is irrelevant. And then the only time this is going to matter is on bosses, where are basically fighting a fifth more of a boss. We have Vow of Fury, monsters are 40% faster. This is probably the worst one, I would say, because it makes a lot of the fights extremely difficult for Axe. Vow of Haunting, monsters will drop a skull, which they can revive from if you don't pick it up in time. Vow of Wandering, you have to fight enemies from other regions. Vow of Scars is 50% healing cut. I've seen people go up to 100%, but in this case, I'm assuming I'm getting hit with the axe, so I would like to heal that back. Gold costs are 80% more expensive. Every room we start off with, we have zero mana. Vow of Forsakening removes two of the blessings we did not pick from the pool for the rest of the run. Vow of Arrogance, we are priming mana based on the rarity of the boon that we pick up, maximum being 30, I believe, for picking up a duo boon. And then finally, we're on the seven minute timer. Nine minutes is nowhere near tight enough, five minutes is far too tight, and seven feels just right. So with that, we're ready to hop into Erebus, where we get presented 
with not a god first, but Selini first. Selini gives us access to Night Bloom, which I feel is a very, very strong hex. It raises a monster from the dead for only 60 mana. I feel like that's really easy to access, especially if we get any amount of Omega damage. Our first god of the night is Aphrodite. Typically, this is a very good pickup for the hammer, but I got special Passion Dash and Glamour Gain is only common. I don't want to run special in this setup because I don't trust it on Melinaway's axe. So one reroll gives us access to common attack, common passion dash, and then an epic version of Glamour Gain. That's 10 mana per second so long as you're next to the enemy and they are weakened. It actually works very well on bosses. In biomes, you now have to run this exercise of finding the monster with weak and then generating mana from it. From Chaos, we do see channel time is increased. All we have to have is five encounters of speed reduction, which is quite a lot to be perfectly honest. But we did hit Glamour Gain, so that is a really good argument to run something that is more mana focused. For my first boon choices, we have a choice of either Zeus or Hera. My idea of going Zeus here is that if I'm running something like Omega Attack, that's a lot of procs of Blitz. However, I would like to see a very good Zeus attack before I actually, you know, lock that in. Unfortunately, we're given the choice of the Special or Static Shock. Static Shock, if you haven't seen, primes 50 mana and does a flat 20 damage on top of each strike that you do. That could be both attacks, specials, maybe even cast as well. It doesn't fulfill our attack slot, so we still have an open slot. However, now we do a flat 20 damage across the board on each of our spins. On smaller enemies, 20 damage on a basic attack of 113 is pretty low. However, when I spin, I only deal 50 damage per spin. So 20 on top of that is, what, 40% damage? And again, does not take the attack slot, so I'll have something else to buff my attack on top of it. Don't forget that we're priming 50 mana, plus we are primed due to the vow that we took. So before taking this palm, I only have 40 mana max. After taking the palm and increasing Static Shock to 25, now we have 60 mana. It actually reduced the prime initial cost from the vow as if I had cleansed it just by using a palm. Our first hammer gives us unyielding slash. This increases attack power by plus 10 and reduces damage while you're doing attacks. The reduced damage is helpful, I'm sure. The attack power actually does buff your omega attack. I don't really have enough money to go into the shop, so we're gonna go for Hermes instead. Hard target is probably the number one choice I take whenever I see Hermes. It's just generically good. It's damage reduction because it gives me a chance to dodge stuff more easily. Against Hecate, we can kind of see what our damage looks like right now. All I need to do is get the mana first. Typically, if you just find whichever Hecate has the weak on it, that's the one that's going to give you mana. Once we have enough, we can test out our spin. We're now doing 60 damage per hit of the spin, and 25, still a little bit less than 50% proc. But don't forget that Static Shock does bounce to other enemies, so I'm technically doing damage to those two without wasting the attack slot. With Hecate dead, we get our Crystalline Figure proc. This is a card called Artificer. Artificer is actually incredibly strong. What it does is that any minor find, such as a resource, can be changed into a major find, which could be anything from a god boon to a hammer. We do need to take a new keepsake though, because it is expired. We have Zeus right now, so we could look for possible duos. That could be Demeter. I believe Poseidon has a decent duo. But in this case, we're gonna go with the Hera because we know for a fact we want Hera's attack just because of how strong it is. But then also their duo increases each other's power. We do get a minor reward very early. You can see that we can transform these ashes into raw money. I believe it's only a hundred bucks, but that's a hundred dollars I would have never had beforehand. 
Now, if you remember me saying, I do really enjoy summoning a monster in fights. You don't realize how many bosses you can actually summon monsters in, and that becomes a whole nother source of DPS. From Selene, we get five points. What I typically do is I check every epic and rare star to make sure there's not anything extremely good here. In this case, we get after we sprint, the servant is repositioned. Any servants I have also have my after you take damage effects. Your raised servant moves and attacks 63% faster. So my priority here is to just get all the cost reduction and increased damage that I can. Don't forget we are on a timer, so I do need to take free rooms whenever I can. One of those includes Narcissus who gives us max HP and some bones that I actually need for Nightmare. From the Sea Snake Elite, I get Hera. Hera shows us a common attack, Keen Intuition and Bridal Glow. Losing both Keen and Bridal Glow is probably fine. It is unfortunate that's a common attack, so I will have to use my Rarify on this. But 60% extra damage on every attack, plus Zeus on top of it, seems pretty good so far. Our second Hermes shows up. This one gives us attack speed. It's only 10%, and to be perfectly honest, I don't know if it really does anything for your Omega attack. The tooltip does say it affects Omega attacks, but 10% faster, what does that truly mean? For the final Charon shot, we get Poseidon from a randomized boon sack. That's not the best thing for us, but once we actually see what he offers, I get Ocean's Bounty. I'm not gonna go Wave Flourish, and I don't really want to prime even more mana. But Ocean's Bounty by itself gives you so much money. Double the money as you go through a biome is absolutely massive. Versus Skilla, we really only have to worry about one thing, and that is can I get the mana while attacking the drummer? That is not bad. Nice. Another fun detail is you can actually summon one of the back singers, and that's through the hex that we got earlier. I'm able to summon the drummer, and then once she expires, I'm able to summon the guitarist. With Skilla and the Sirens dead, we now need to pick up our third keepsake. I'm still a very big fan of resurrecting a pet, so I'm going to actually take Moonbeam here. This gives us plus four, because it's not at max rank, on the next pad of stars that we see. And that's certainly quite a lot of stars. In the Fields of Mourning, our first god boon that we come up with is Aphrodite again. We don't really have a ton of options left that we want to see from Aphrodite, but she happens to give us Soulmate. Soulmate actually gives us damage versus hitched foes. It, it reads kind of weirdly, but basically one monster has both weak and hitch at the same time, and then the hitched monsters, all of them, just take more damage. Unfortunately, we're losing out on the special, which would have been actually very nice for your pet, since pets are usually close range. My next god boon is a choice between Zeus or Hera. I don't really want to get Hera just yet, so I'm going to go for the Zeus instead. With the palm, we're going to increase the damage of our attack. That also frees us of the prime that we had initially. Just before we're going to a Zeus, I happen to see a random ash off to the corner. Remember, we can transform these into major finds, which happens to turn it into a hammer, which is probably the biggest hit we could possibly get in this case. We get Furious Whirlwind, which gives us even more channel speed, and we can move faster while channeling. For the Zeus, I have the choice between Storm Ring and Divine Vengeance. Divine Vengeance could be very good with the pet that we have. 
in hindsight, I think I probably should have taken Divine Vengeance, but instead I take Storm Ring instead. Where the idea is that I'm either getting Engagement Ring, Aphrodite's cast, or Zeus's cast. And Zeus is the only one that does damage among those three. Unfortunately, the Echo spawns. We have to double our Zeus. This Zeus gives us King's Ransom, which actually deletes all of my Hera boons and increases all of my Zeus boons per Hera that got deleted. So we're losing our attack here, which is extremely dangerous. But in exchange, we're getting plus four on all of our Zeus boons. The Hera comes back. I will have to go for that because I, I literally need her attack in order to get through this. The attack does come back. It's only common, unfortunately. I'm not willing to re-roll. Selene shows up, in which case we have Path of Stars. We have five full points here. So I'm able to get my Epic. And because the Sprint doesn't really do anything, we're going to start pathing towards the upper section. Again, taking cost reductions as well as damage up. Poseidon shows up and shows us double up. Now, I could take just gold here. That would give me a little bit of healing, but we don't need it as of right now. So I'd rather have double up for the chance to hit double palm or even double path of stars as possible. With this path of stars, we get access to the damage taken thing, and then we'll just fill the rest of the board with whatever points we can. Before the final boss, we have our Charon shop. Here we're gonna grab the Poseidon, we do see Water Fitness, and to be fair, we have both Poseidon and Aphrodite, and both of those give you access to water. All I need are two more points to make that active. I will grab the mana here. I know we're sitting on 100, but if I pick up any more boons, they will probably prime more mana, and I really don't want to get too low. Cerberus is going to be a very good test of the build. We have access to Hera Attack. We also have Zeus Omega Special. This thing is constantly weakened, so we have access to mana. At this point, each individual spin does 90 damage to Cerberus. And then the Static Shock on top of that is 30 damage. That pet, I don't know if I trust that pet. 260. All it does is suck. What a terrible pet. It's not even trying. Okay, here we go. These are good pets. Unlike what we just saw. Sometimes the Cerberus fight's really difficult for melee players because he does constant damage around himself. I am perfectly willing to just let my pet do all the work until the very end where I can go in and steal the last hit. The final keepsake that we pick up at the end of the run, we're going to go for a standard Knuckle Bones here. Kronos will take 15% of his life as damage, and then I also have damage reduction against him. In Tartarus, my main goal is to find wherever my Glamour Buddy is, start generating mana, and then start spinning on everything I see. Once I hit 45 mana spin, I'm going to summon a pet, and then that pet will hopefully help kill things that I can't see. From Dad, we have the option to go Howling Soul here, which is kind of interesting. With Omega Zeus, you can throw out the Lightning Bolt. This is a melee build, though, so that should not be necessary. I'll be taking Old Grudge instead to do even more damage against Kronos. Unfortunately, I got no extra rooms in this Charteris setup. I would have gone for Hera for maybe some more Hitch damage. I believe Aphrodite has damage versus weak enemies. A lot of things could have shown up, but I just got no option for any. At the end, with the $900 I have, I'm going to go ahead and buy some food. I don't have enough money to buy the Hera Boon, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and hop into Kronos himself. Quick dip. At the start of the fight, you can see an instant 30% of Kronos' HP bar just vanish thanks to both Knuckle Bones and Hades coming in. My mana buddy is a little bit oddly positioned, so it's going to take me some time to get my mana back. 
Once it's on Kronos, however, we can actually get mana very easily. And of course, we have our Giga Pet. This thing is borderline unkillable, and I wish I had had the revenge damage on it too. My goal here is to simply not get baited into doing full spins. I spin for as long as possible and then try to dash away before I take damage. Phase 2 for me actually isn't very good because I don't really have decent range to fight Kronos with. I could use Omega Special, it's not nothing. You'll see me charge it every now and then just to get in random DPS. My summon is no longer very good. We're now summoning a single rat that is so unhelpful. And then once we get to the hourglasses, we'll be summoning those as pets instead. Sometimes Kronos is a little scary to reach. If you have Apollo attack, then it's a lot easier to Omega spin and still hit Kronos. In this case, all I can really do is position myself or use Omega Special to actually land hits. The Moon Prism buffs they did are all really good. Like, it's kind of incredible how just reducing the costs did so much. Oh my god, that's a 360 degree circle. As opposed to a 270 degree circle. I'm stuck. We got reposition. Where is he going? I mean, I'm not complaining, but what what was up there? Does this anyone have any idea? Grandpa's lost. So with Kronos defeated, there's our very first. 32 win. Melinda way to start. Our Omega attack did the majority of our damage. Our static shock did half, which is what we expected it to do. You could say in all that was 120,000 damage from just our attack button and then everything else did extra damage on top of that. But that's not all though. We have two more axes to do. So let's go ahead into Zagreus's room to reset the run and then go right back to start up an aspect of Charon run. So now with Melinaway out of the way, we're gonna move on to Aspect of Charon. Aspect of Charon makes all of your cast last for three seconds longer. And then when you use your Omega special on it, that cast erupts as an Omega cast. As you can imagine, Omega Special is a really big mana spender, so I do need some kind of mana source as soon as we load in. My choice is going to be Hera for Born Gain. For my Arcana cards, I do need to make one change here. I don't really need mana restoration because I'm going Hera Born Again. Sorry, I'm going to say Born Again a lot because that's a joke we make over on the Twitch stream. This doesn't need mana. If you're at zero, it'll just shoot you immediately up to 100. So to have mana generation isn't really a thing that I need just yet. When I remove the unseen, I do lose my centaur. Centaur requires you to have cards between numbers one and five. And I'm a big fan of this. I'm not saying it's required gameplay, but since we're using a lot of mana and we have healing reduced, Centaur actually helps out quite a bit. So I'm replacing this 5 cost with another 5 cost, which is Boatman. Boatman actually gives us money and could be the difference between getting that Hera sooner rather than later. Farewell, Commander. When we hop into the run, we get our first hammer. We get Hell Splitter, Unyielding Slash, and Metal Shredding. We only have one special aspect here, so we're gonna grab the Shredder. Keep in mind that Melting Shredder only counts the actual special button, which is the shield. It does not shred with the damage that comes from the Omega special. Our initial rooms are a little difficult. I can't even really play the Charon weapon because I don't have any mana at all until we get our very first choice door, which happens to be Hera. Hera does give us the born gain, and it is epic, 
So we're only priming six mana every time we use it. However, it does, of course, prime 20 mana by itself just based on the vows we have. We hop into our Chaos Gate where we get introduced to Gagged Chasm. This is part of our kit. It's cast damage. The only thing is I cannot use Omegas or else I take some damage. So that means the next rooms I have to clear again without using the aspect of Charon at all. And get the choice between Zeus or Arachne. Zeus isn't too, too bad with Hera's aspects. They do have a duo that boosts each other, so it could be very interesting. After a long and drawn out fight with the Root Stalker, Zeus does show us a bunch of stuff that I really can't use. I don't care for the sprint. We're never gonna hit the attack button. And I don't wanna use too many rerolls here. Really, my goal is Lightning Lance. Just to be able to put the cast down from range is really, really nice. So for now, we'll just grab Divine Vengeance and move on. Lightning from on high. In the next room, my chaos is actually finished, so now I can finally do some Charon gameplay. And you can see with Born Gain just how good this is from using base axe gameplay. In our shop, we get shown Zeus again. Zeus does have Head and Flourish, which is a special. The interesting thing about this is that it applies Blitz, but Special can't really activate the Blitz on its own unless you get double casted Omega Special. However, with Charon's Axe, we're gonna have the Omega cast after, and that's plenty enough to pop the Blitz coming from Heaven Flourish. I do go ahead and grab Selene here. She shows us Moonwater, Night Bloom, and Total Eclipse. I'm gonna grab Moonwater here. I'm already at like half HP, and I don't want to really stay that low. Everything we have is all ready to go. We are just missing an Omega cast. We still get the damage from the Omega cast though, so it's still important to do that Charon gameplay because I don't think we can out damage it even if we try. You can see how the Blitz activates very, very easily. When it's time to grab my next keepsake, I actually want to make that Zeus boon even better. So Aromatic File is going to increase the rarity of that common into an epic. I do get shown Chaos again. Chaos actually has their Legendary available, which gives me an additional Death Defiance. But I'm pretty confident with my Charon Axe. I do see increased Special Damage, which we will need in order to level up our gameplay. Let's go ahead and grab that instead. We need to be confident in the Charon Axe and just stack as much damage on it as we can. But I really want to get that special. Oh my god. Help. Predictable. We're showing a Hermes. Hermes actually has a couple of good things for us. I have a hard time, no pun intended, skipping hard target. It's actually a very, very good boon to pick up. Fighting against this tiny vermin should be relatively easy. You have to use your cast in this fight anyway to keep the monster under control. Once it's down, we get yet again Zeus. Zeus is now showing us Storm Ring. I highly recommend you do not take this. It does do one instance of lightning damage. It's like the monster is known to be in an Omega cast, but it won't continue to do lightning strikes after. We do, however, get our lightning lance, so that's great. We will grab that. Versus Scylla, we can kind of put our build into practice. All we're doing is that we're casting from range, putting down the cast on as many targets as we can, and then we detonate it with our Omega special. If we hit more than one enemy, great. If we only hit one of them, that's okay too. As you can see, it's very easy to get the Blitz off. Blitz is now doing 220 damage, which is a fantastic number. After the Sirens are dead, we need to think about the best cast that we can take. Right now, the only cast that really do something with Aspect of Charon is Zeus, but it's bad. Poseidon, but it's not that great. Apollo, which is amazing. Aspect of Charon is actually really good for the fields as well. 
we have all these instances where I can't really get to monsters or let alone even see them in this domain expansion that's happening right now. So all I have to do is like throw out a Charon special into that cloud and it will probably kill something. The next Daedalus Hammer gives us absolutely nothing. All three are for a button that I am never ever gonna press. For now, I'm going to take Rapid Slash. This is actually updated from the old version, which was essentially broken. Not in a good way, by the way. We can show a little bit of the power thus far with all the boons that we have. We're now plus three on palms on our Omega Special. However, we still don't have a cast yet. With the Lamia dead, we get Apollo. Apollo, unfortunately, does not have what we want, so we do have to roll this. It would be really nice to have Nova Strike, which does give us a chance to get his Legendary, Infinite but it didn't show up, unfortunately. Brilliant. However, Apollo does show us Solar Ring. That is exactly what we want, and the rarity is great. Omega Cast now does 20 damage every 0.13. I believe it no longer does the detonation anymore. After that, we'll get Echo, so we can actually have a second Apollo. It does show us the common Nova Strike, which is part of Exceptional Talent. Don't forget that every time we get a God Boon, we're banning out the other choices. So I actually already have Extra Dose banned. There's nothing in the UI that tells us that. It's all from muscle memory. So the only way we can get Apollo is if Supernova shows up. And then after that, I have to get yet another Apollo Boon in order to get a chance to get Exceptional Talent. I do get my first Moonwater upgrade. There is some decently fun stuff in here. We're very deep in the run, however, so it's very unlikely these things will show up. So for now, I'll get the Mana Restoration and a little bit of gold because the chances of me getting any of those buffs is pretty much zero. My next Hermes shows me Swift Flourish. Flourish does say it affects both your regular special and the Omega, but that 15%, I can't really prove how that works. So I'm going to take Nitro Sprint instead, which at least gives us one instance of damage reduction. In the Charon shop, I get greeted by Hestia. The only thing, and I mean the only thing I could probably want from this is Soot Sprint. That's going to be very helpful in Tartarus. Control Burn is also kind of interesting. We're doing Omega Specials, so that's an extra 80 damage across the board. Now with this palm, we're gonna do a very interesting thing. I'm gonna palm my Divine Vengeance instead of the Born Gain. And the reason why is that Divine Vengeance is currently locking 10 mana away from me. As you can see, I'm currently at 40 Prime. When I go into the next area, which is Infernal Cerberus, we're gonna go to 30 Prime. And the reason why is that when you palm, any boon that has locked away mana thanks to the vow, I'm not saying a palm helps out on any prime, it's only when you have something primed based off the vow. We actually get to remove that lock, and now I get that 10 mana back. Cerberus should be a pretty decent fight for us. We don't really ever have to do basic attacks on it, I'm kind of doing it now just to see how it feels. With Cerberus dead, we have to get our final keepsake of the run. Right now, if we were to pick up a hammer, we could get one extremely good option, and that is double-casted Omega Special. None of the other hammers particularly brick our build, so I'm going to actually take Experimental Hammer and roll the dice for something good. All right. Here, I actually pick up Empowering Guard, which you might think is incredible. It's a 50% damage buff for 15 seconds. And while that is incredible, I really don't trust the special to block anything. Don't get me wrong, it does block stuff, but you cannot tell me the amount of times that I have gotten hit while doing a block is not like reason to just not even try in the first place. With Hades, I pick up Deep Descent. Not only does it help out by reducing reinforcements, but it also reduces the amount of mana I'm spending. 
from using all these Hera born agains. And run into the first elite. This is the money bag. To be fair, I am not playing this properly. I should actually be using my metal shredder in order to reduce some of that armor. You can kind of see I'm not really doing much production. I have to hit it with the actual block part of the Omega Special. And you can see when I do that, I actually deal 2,000 damage to its armor. That only happens if you hit it with the actual block portion. We do get the duo between Zeus and Apollo. This, honestly, I don't know if it does anything. Whenever you do your Omega cast, enemies are repeatedly stricken by lightning bolts. Now this does say it requires 30 mana to be charged into it. However, we know for a fact that Omega cast never uses mana whenever we do Charon. So you all are gonna have to watch the gameplay extra close for me to see, do I get the benefit of lightning bolts? I clear out the next rooms relatively easily. I don't really have any alternate choices. I have to go the straight shot to the shop. I would have really liked some palms because as you can see, the amount of mana I have primed is now 70. That one duo I picked up was 30 mana primed from our top end, which is very, very bad for us. I do grab the Apollo here. This might have been a misplay because I probably needed some mana. I do get introduced to the duo between him and Hera. However, that's another 30 mana taken away from us, and we absolutely cannot do that. We'll grab Supernova instead. I should have probably grabbed the mana. And now we're able to go into the Kronos fight. Kronos himself has a little bit of outplay against this build. Specifically, he has teleports. So even though he might be in the Omega cast, he might actually jump out of it. He also is not slowed down when you're doing your Omegas. So sometimes I have a plan to like lock him down with the cast and then they'll make a special, but he's actually running at me the entire time. Phase 1 isn't too, too bad. However, when we get into Phase 2, we have a really big problem. I'm down to just 36 maximum mana. That means I only get to do a few more Omega casts before I'm completely tapped out. Let's go ahead and see how this ends up. We're down to 28. Oh my god, I couldn't cast through that? Such power. I'm out of mana. Spam too much? This... It's literally the build! How do you spam? It can't be too much spam. That's the only button I have. Oh god. Kill that thing. Oh my god, that killed my Omega cast. For the Death Defiance. Oh my god. And the fact that the cast lasts longer when you're using Charon is like plus two or three seconds, if not longer. 
So like I couldn't actually get the Omega cast to just kill him because he could just walk out of it. So you can see with even sub-optimal build design, this actually worked out extremely well. Big tip here is if you're going with Hera as born gain, then you absolutely need mana, either max or palms, to clear out some of the things that you've locked into place. I still can't tell if the duo was really doing a lot in any of the fights, so definitely take a look at the Kronos fight and let me know if you think that duo was helping. We do have one more axe to get through though. We're not quite done yet. So you know what that means? It means we're going back to the crossroads. Aspect of Thanatos is the last aspect we need on axe. This thing is changed from its previous version. Now we have a 25% attack buff, and then each hit that we land gives us mortality. That increases our crit rate for all of our omegas, and then we lose that if we take damage. This is a situation where I don't really need a specific keepsake. That doesn't mean you can't take a keepsake, but I don't have a specific god that I'm looking for right now. In that circumstance, I always take Crystalline Figure. We could hit something massive, or we could hit something that is not really going to change us. The first Olympian we come across is our good friend Hera. Queen Hera shows us Sworn Strike, which is actually very good. We're going to take that as a damage buff, and that allows us to be able to get through the first couple biomes with relative ease. The first choice door we come across is Poseidon and Hera. Taking a look at the duo between Hera and Poseidon, they have Golden Rule, and that gives a damage increase based on how much gold you have. I don't know if I really care about that just yet. I really just care about Ocean's Bounty and Double Up, which are some of the best boons in the whole game. We get through the first area, and we're shown Geyser Ring, Breaker Sprint, and Fluid Gain. All stuff I don't want. A reroll on top of that gives us even less of what we want. So I think for now we'll just grab the Breaker Sprint. It's the least impactful option here. We have to get through the Root Stalker, which you can see is much, much easier compared to Charon Axe, only because I can actually do my whole kit. With that dead, we see an epic Sunken Treasure. Now to be fair, I thought Sunken Treasure was the same thing as Ocean's Bounty. I forgot that those were completely separate boons. However, a 144 injection of money is still relatively worth it. From Arachne, we grab Lavender Dress. This is a little bit of channel speed. And we do see our first hammer. Advancing Whirlwind, I absolutely despise. For some reason, in this game, Advancing Whirlwind keeps Malinaway spinning. There's a completely separate boon in the game called Psychic Whirlwind, and this allows Malinaway to do whatever she wants while she's spinning. You would think if you throw out your axe as almost like a boomerang, why am I still spinning in place doing absolutely nothing? Very, very <laughs> not fun, or at least not immersive, I guess. From Hermes, we see Quick Buck. We do have a lot of gold right now, and we're just getting 20% more across the board. I think we have to take that. At this point, I have primed half of my mana. 56 in total. I'm gonna grab a little bit of mana here to try to prevent the same thing that happened last time. Keep in mind, I'm not gonna not spend gold. I can't really assume that the Hera Poseidon duo is gonna show up. So I'm at least flexing the gold I have to make sure that I can get through this run properly. And then if the duo shows up later, I still get damage up. In the shop, we're shown Demeter. Of course, Grit is here, which is damage reduction. I already have two Earth, so I only need four more. And we get Earth from both Hera and Demeter. We'll grab a Palm here, because as I said before, we need to be able to reduce the mana that we've locked in. Versus Hecate, we get to kind of flex the damage that we have from the Thanatos. It's actually a very, very good weapon. Fake. Faker. That's gonna be such a good game. Sonic Shadow Generations. 
I hope you all are ready for me to be a Sonic streamer for the rest of eternity. We absorb three hits, I believe, in this fight. So even if you don't trust your flawless gameplay, the fact that we can absorb three hits for free makes this a lot easier. With Hecate dead, we get to proc our crystalline figure, which hits none other than Judgment, which I think is the absolute best possible hit. However, Judgment isn't going to proc until the next boss that we kill. So just keep in mind that we got really, really good possibilities here. We are going to go ahead and swap into Poseidon for our keepsake, just to hopefully get the double up or the ocean's bounty. We'll spend a little bit of money on Omega damage, just to make sure we can get through these areas a lot more easily. We head into our first, I think, Chaos Gate. The first things they show us we absolutely cannot take. The second roll gives us an epic hobbled strike, 97% attack damage by just like nerfing our dash. Definitely have to take that. We run into Nemesis, who is actually doing that fight for money. And that's gonna be kind of interesting because like we do want money now. We have Hermes that's boosting the amount of money I get. So if we win, we get essentially extra profit, like stunts because of this. Even though I've been spending gold, after the Nemesis fight, I'm up to $400. I do make a misplay here. While I'm looking at the Charon shop, Nemesis actually leaves through one of the portals. For some reason, I assumed that the entire map would be paused while I was in Charon's shop, but apparently not. That could have been a Poseidon that I lost. It could have been a Hammer that I lost. So now I have to pick between Apollo and Demeter. I'm not going to add Apollo to the pool. However, Demeter is in a free area, so that's very nice. From Demeter, we have the option between Arctic Ring, Rare Crop, and Winter's Coat. I have to do a little bit of experimentation here because I'm not quite sure if Rare Crop can hit anything from Hermes or if it could hit anything from Poseidon, such as Sunken Treasure. I'll go ahead and grab the Rare Crop, which happens to hit our Sprint. Not like the best option for us, but then again, the Sprint does kill, and making it stronger is probably helpful. We find Selene, who happens to show us Night Bloom at full moon status. I am not like trying to play Night Bloom every single game, it just happens to show it to me. And I do think that this is one of the absolute best moon aspects you can pick up. For the last Charon shop, we have access to Hephaestus. Hephaestus is in fact Earth, and we know we need that for course grit. Upon grabbing it, we get an epic uncanny fortitude. This is bonus health based on our mana. Keep in mind that that's gonna lock 20 mana away from us. I don't have to do this like Omega cast, Omega special combo to do all my damage. Really, I am doing basic attacks and then I just spin. The spin does cost a fair amount, so I do have to kind of balance that out by picking up mana. I'm currently at 150 max mana while also killing off 50. In the Siren fight, when they stack on top of each other with the hitch on top of it, it is amazing amounts of damage. Wait, they got destroyed! I'm stuck. Oh my god, it's the hitch. They're all sharing such massive crits. <laughs> Wait, we cooked. With the Sirens dead, our Judgment activates, which gives us five whole Arcana cards. We end up hitting Fates, Boatman, Origination, Queen, and Excellence. I know like two of those off the top of my head. But I'm not even going to bother checking because by the end of this run, I'll probably have every card available. In the Fields of Mourning, we get more mana, we get money, and we save the hammer for last in the case that we can double it with Echo. This hammer is showing us Furious Whirlwind, which to be fair, having advancing that I can cast faster and I can move around with that would make it so much easier. I still think that advancing is probably one of the worst hammers, but adding a hammer to it 
makes it extremely good gameplay. Because we are going for a little bit of gold, I do need to use the gold troves whenever we see it. Clearing this gave me an extra $91, even though it says 76 on the actual trove itself. The Elite Vampire is a monster that I absolutely despise. For some reason, I cannot avoid damage from this thing, even with like advancing whirlwind and stuff like that. It chunks me out of half of my available health, which is awful. From Poseidon, however, we see both Ocean's Bounty and Double Up. It's unfortunate that we are having to ban one of these out. So I think I'm going to go for Double Up. And then if I happen to Double Up a Palm, then that is like more stonks on mana. From Echo, we're going to duplicate the Poseidon. From that, we do get Natural Selection. That's the duo between Poseidon and Demeter. This one's kind of weird. Health and mana, I think I'm okay with locking out because we've been picking up mana this whole time and then Demeter gives us stuff that gives us max HP. However, locking out gold though, that seems like not good. I'm gonna try it as the experimentation. To be fair, we don't actually have the duo between Poseidon and Hera. So technically speaking, locking out gold is not a bad choice. So what that looks like is the doors have palms, they have Selene, but they don't have that extra fluff on it. After rerolling the door, we now have Hera, Selene, and Poseidon. It gives us extra chances to get that duo. The build is actually working fairly good now. We happen to get Hera's duo with Hephaestus for some reason. Buffing damage on non-empowered attacks, we don't have any of that, so we're gonna skip it. Keen Intuition, I still don't really know if it works if you have max mana or not. I don't know if the game considers having primed mana to be the same thing as having maximum mana. From Poseidon, we're actually out of boons to pick up. We happen to get Golden Rule here. Increases damage per 100 gold. We're currently sitting at $603. From what I understand, the math on this is not quite what you think it is. It's not just a 5% damage increase based on your gold. It's like for every $100, you get 5% flat attack added to it. So my original spins were doing 169 and now they're doing 221 per hit of the actual spin. I don't know what the math is on that, but from what I've been told, it is a flat number on top of that 169. With Path of Stars, I still don't hit Permanent Pet. I'm pretty sure they didn't remove Permanent Pet, but I've been really unlucky in getting it. So now that we have the bonus damage based on gold, I need to start skipping shops whenever we can. I'm gonna do the Infernal Trove, and then after that, we immediately go for a Palm instead. This pomegranate shows us Breaker Sprint, Born Gain, and Double Up. We're gonna grab the Double Up. Not only is it a really good boon just to have in general, but we're gonna free up 20 mana, I believe. So now I have 140 available to me at 96 maximum mana. We're able to get through Cerberus without too, too much issue. This is more of a melee-centric build compared to the Charon Axe. And to be fair, this isn't the only way to play the Thanatos. We just happen to get Whirlwind stuff, so that's why I plan on using it. Wait, did it double cast the explosion underneath it? Don't waste on that summon. That was a bad summon. Oh, this is much better. Oh yeah, give me that. Big Wolfie. A Wolfie. Of course, our pets do a very good job of dealing damage. Wolf on Wolf. Don't look that up. Oh. And I get another Judgment proc. I don't know if I have any cards left. With Cerberus dead, we get our final judgment proc. Seer, Strength, Artificer, Knight, and Swift Runner. 
Again, I don't need to check these because at this point, I have every card available to us. The final keepsake of the run, we're going to swap into Aromatic File. The file. In order to see, will I buff any of the commons I have? From the look of it, Quick Buck is not a common at all. In fact, it has no rarity. And then I assume because Rare Crop was already done, or maybe because it's not palmable, it also can't get its rarity increased by the file. Anyway, not a huge loss here. We do get extra healing, so thank you for that. Our damage is now looking pretty decent at $1,000. One hit from the spin now does 248 damage without crit. From Dad, I'm gonna grab Deep Descent again. Because I'm running the Hera Born Gain, I really don't want to spend more mana than I actually have to. I actually forgot that because I'm running Judgment, we happen to get the ability to roll doors now. I happen to get a double choice door. These doors can become extra gold or extra palms. And those would be like very, very strong right now. I do hit the super palm here. It could be doubled up as well. No double up, however, so let's move on to the next one. Another quick tip here is that if you're running Thanatos plus the summon ability, you actually can hit your own summon to get your crit rate back. You're able to farm crit rate even if you took a hit, and that way you get it maxed out before the next encounter. You get the chance to increase Sword Strike all the way to 103, or Breaker Sprint to 270. 103 is certainly a great number to see, and we hit the double up. However, we'll be taking Keen Intuition here. Again, I still don't know for sure if this works or not, but 72% if it does is great. If it does not, we're actually freeing up another 10 mana. I do see double money here, which would be a fantastic grab. If I wasn't playing one 32 Fear, I think I would go in. It is extra damage, but right now we're in what I call win more territory, where what I have is possible to win with, and the only thing that might possibly happen is that I actually take damage and the entire run is worse. In the final Cameron shop, I do get big food, which is very, very nice. The moon is $100, so technically I'll lose 5% just by grabbing that. We know for a fact having a pet with these kind of buffs is actually really nice. We never got a special, however, so that's really unfortunate. We won't be able to get the benefit of that. All right, let's go ahead and head into Kronos. We have what looks to be a very strong build. We do quite a bit of damage on all of our spins. And I don't really have to be like within range of Kronos, which is probably the best part of this. This is almost like a ranged build, even though we have spin to win. One single spin on Kronos does 268 damage at $1,400. A crit does 805 damage. But like I said, the really unfortunate part about advancing Whirlwind is that you can't dash while you do it. So most of the time, I'm only going to get a couple of spins before I have to cancel the whole thing. He also teleports. You might have to reposition yourself before you actually finish the cast. As you see, I have to cancel these all the time. It's actually not a very good fight for us. Okay. I lost all of my bubbles, but this is actually a really good base for us. Because I can do this and just chill. Oh, wow from across the map. Oops. I should've went in, but I got afraid of the bubble. Yeah, see, the hourglass sucks. Oh, oh wait, did he die to Hitch? With Kronos dead, we get our final breakout of the build. 200,000 damage worth of Omega attacks. Another 27,000 from our regular attack. Even the dash strike did 20,000 by itself. 
I don't know if the Hera duo was 100% required to get this win, but just adding tons and tons of damage definitely helps when you're trying to make a 32 fear win. And also, shout out to Crystalline Figure giving us judgment. Not only did I get a huge power spike from all these cards, but it also gave me my faded list, which required me to get wins <laughs> with all of these cards. So there you have it. Three wins, Fear 32, all axes done. Not any of these were optimal either. I would say most of this was suboptimal, and we still got fairly good, consistent wins out of them. If you have your own axe builds that you think are super easy to win 32 on, leave those as a comment. Subscribe if you want to see more Hades stuff or any of the other roguelikes that we play. And if you all like this video enough, I don't mind doing another video for the next weapon, all 32s. Either way, hope you enjoyed. Check out some of these other Hades vids I have, and I'll see you on the next video.